Washington Nationals are sitting high atop the NLE standings, but the Mets are lurking right behind them. They go head-to-head this weekend. The pregame Saturday is at 6 Eastern and Sunday at 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio. Flashy and Paige Gutierrez is big and nice. Much better than yesterday's panel. So, come on, I was on the panel yesterday. Exactly. Today they're talking Brady, <laughs> Tulo for Reyes, Puig for anybody, and Doolittle for a burrito. Let's hoard. Look out. Oh. Oh, oh head ball. Oh, head on a swivel, buddy. Head on a swivel. Hey, down. Welcome to Around the Horn, presented by Smirnoff, part of the NFL. the NFL news today. Brady suspension upheld. Hot takes coming on that, I'm sure. But also this, <laughs> what we found out today, that the league found out Brady ordered his cell phone with the nearly 10,000 text messages, some about maybe these balls, on it destroyed as the Ted Wells investigation came a call it. Now, maybe we can expect court, whether that comes fast or slow, who knows? Sometimes I rock fast, sometimes I rock slow. Plasky, what do you think of this? I think it's tremendous that it was upheld. I think he's lucky it wasn't double that, especially now in the light of the cell phone. Very coincidental that he would destroy the cell phone with all the text messages when he knew, this is after he knew they were seeking electronic information about what happened. If he didn't do anything wrong, okay. why did he try to get rid of any of the has said so he's always he, destroyed his cell phones and SIM cards when he's done using and gets a new Very cell phone. coincidental. I don't know how it's going to hold up in a court, and, and which is where they're going to be going now. I'm sure Brady will take the NFL to court. I think his chances are slim. I think this is a, this is a good day for football. A good day to, to say cheers, never win. Woody Page? Well, the actual. I'm shocked. Win. I'm shocked. I actually thought it was going to be overturned. At the very worst, that it was going to be a two game suspension or probably a fine. But I think the destroying of the cell phone was what undid him. I think if he hadn't done that, I think he'd have been able to have a gr- yeah. great case for overturning it. But I think now we will see it in court. And injunctions can be filed in a couple of days. So they can probably push this out if they want to. If they don't, it isn't interesting that they'd be facing the Baltimore Colts in his return. Oddly enough, the same team that he last faced when the problems were Indiana, arising. But yeah. I am shocked. Okay. Israel Gutierrez? Uh, Bill, not only did he win the Super Bowl, but he might never actually serve this suspension. You never know, depending on what happens uh, in federal court. But this just brings up so many more questions for me. The top of the list is, what is the cloud for if it's not for recovering uh, text messages from broken phones? I have no idea what that is. The other part about it is, is a lot of these, a lot of these damning text messages coming from um, the Ball Boys accounts. Do they not have Tom Brady's responses on them? Were they able to sort of erase half of those text messages? Because otherwise, why would you need Tom Brady's phone even further? Because who is he texting about this? You know, random friends bragging about getting the, the footballs below 12.5 CSI Miami it's over just, here with this. Yeah, it's just too, woo, too, it's this is not evidence, but it's evidence of a guilty conscience. Therefore, it's really hard to argue for Tom Brady. I just still have a bu- bunch of okay, questions. Okay, this is such a bad look for the NFL. If you take a look at the NFL schedule, take a look at week five when the Dallas Cowboys mm-hmm. pay, play the New England Patriots. Greg Hardy will be back on the field, but the Patriots will not have Tom Brady because they have a bye week. So he will be serving possibly the fourth of a four game suspension. The optics of that are terrible for the NFL. And, and I'm with Izzy as well here. Like, what do you need Tom Brady's cell phone, f- cell phone for if you already have the screenshots and all of those text messages that the ball boys have already given him? I understand why Tom Brady would not want to turn over his cell phone in this day and age and TMZ and everything that could come out about it. This is just all around a bad look Flash for the NFL. The optics would have been a lot worse for the NFL, K if this thing had been struck down or been eliminated. You, you cannot have them giving a break to his buddy Robert Kraft in the mm-hmm. Patriots. It can't happen. The what right thing it? happened. Well, when it happens this in federal doesn't... court, it will be a bad look for them. Mm-hmm. This still doesn't court. explain why it took the NFL so long to come up with this when they had all of the discovery two and a half months ago. I think they were still trying to just protect themselves on all this. Well... Was it successful then, in your opinion? Did they protect themselves? We got one side of the panel saying this is a good day for the NFL, another side saying this is a bad day for the NFL. That was always going to happen, wasn't it? There's always going to be two distinct camps who who had uh, an opinion on this. We're, Miami gonna, did, we're not going to get to the bottom of it now. Let's, let's just move on. Let's talk baseball. Let's talk too low and race. Sexy names and more offense for Toronto, which is kind of absurd because 
they're first by a mile. And then <laughs> you got two players here that this could very possibly be a named player to be injured later for a named player to be <laughs> injured later. Woody, what do you make for uh, too low for Reyes? You're such a negative person. Let's assume both of them are going to be healthy. Uh, it's going to be a great trade for Toronto. you got the best defensive shortstop in all the baseball. People say, well, he's been manufactured by Coorsfield. No, if you look at his numbers away from Denver, he is still an exceptional offensive player at 30. You have control of him until 2020. He is in a position to help them get into that second wild card spot. It's a great trade for them. The Rockies actually can rebuild with three new young pitchers. They were top prospects in the uh, uh, Toronto system. So I think it works out great for both teams. Israel, what do you think of uh, the Blue Jays specifically going after Tulo here, a bat, when they need some pitching? Yeah, I can see it making sense for them. I mean, look, if you look at the, what they've done over the last several years, bringing in big names, whether it be Josh Johnson, you know, Dickey, uh, here, Donaldson, and now we've got here Tulowitzki here, and they have him under contract uh, through 2020. So you're talking about building a team. Yeah, th maybe they don't get the big name free agents. Maybe they don't spend that way, uh, and maybe they're you know just tired of going through the farm system or what have you. But they seem to be building pieces through the trade market, and I think this makes sense for them. You got him okay. under contract for another. Kate, what do you years. think of the Blue Jays trying to score 100 runs while allowing 99 per game here? Well, <laughs> if you actually do throw some numbers at this. The Blue Jays just went from a 34% chance of making the playoffs to a 41% chance, according to the folks at 538. Now, 8% might not seem like a lot, but there are a lot of teams in Major League Baseball that would kill to add 8 percentage points to their likelihood of making the playoffs, and that's what this trade does for them. So if I'm a Blue Jays fan, I'm ecstatic at this trade. Okay, so you're all fine with going for a bat when you need pitching as well. How about you, Bill Plasky? <laughs> Well, now, 34 to 41, that's 7%, right, Kate? So 7% chance increase. And that doesn't make sense. You don't, trade, you don't trade that sort of young pitching for just a 7% chance to make the playoffs. I don't know what the – I think it's a good move for the Rockies. I don't know what the Blue Jays are doing. They're obviously going to build a team around Tula Whiskey, which really didn't work that well in Colorado. They got the one World Series, but the guy can't stay healthy a lot. And when's the last time – is you talk about Blue Jays making all these big-time moves. When's the last time they made the playoffs? I don't think anybody can even remember. It's been a long time. These moves have not worked out. You need to build from within. That's how you build a winner. I think they traded away a lot. 21 years since much. Toronto made the playoffs. Well, that would be that, more the reason to make this baseball. move than Bill. What is it? Woody Page, last word. You know Tula yeah, Whiskey better than anyone absolutely. on this panel. Absolutely. You're going to have an instant leader in the clubhouse. He's a captain kind of guy. He's going to bring, I think, that club together. He's going to help that pitching staff because he is such a quality defensive player. Offensively, he's okay. going to give you another bat in the middle of the lineup, and they can use that to get pitching from other teams. The field. It's not over. Okay. Well, neither could Reyes. So. <laughs> <than Reyes. laughs> These two guys, you're hoping both can stay healthy. We'll move on. Let's talk about the Arizona Cardinals hiring Jen Welter now. First female coach in NFL history. NBA saw the hiring of Becky Hammonds in Spurs bench last year, so much claim. How significant is this hire in the sport of football, Kate, when you compare it to basketball? It's definitely significant because you're making inroads in a space where you've never had them before. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's the direct parallel to what happened in basketball because Becky Hammond represents a wealth of female basketball players who have played at the highest level in leagues that are recognized as the highest level and I think it will lead to more and more female coaches being hired. I think on the football side, maybe eventually, but I don't think it's going to spark mm -hmm. the same movement that we'll see on the How much do you think is riding on how, it, how the players react to this, Kate? I think what they say and how they react is crucial and I anticipate that they're going to recognize pretty quickly that she can teach and she knows football and she can impart wisdom to them the same way a guy could. Flash again, the welter hire? Yeah, you know, I, I think in some ways it's just as, it's just as impressive as a ham and as a ham and hire because again, it's putting gender empowerment into that culture. And bottom line is, Tony, as you know, coaching is teaching, and if she can be a teacher, mm -hmm. she's going to listen, yeah. and, they, and they will and they will listen to her because their jobs are on the line to listen to her. Woody Page. Uh, I talked to Dr. Welter a few months ago. She's not only helped men and women in sports psychology because she is a doctor with degrees in sports and clinical psychology. Part of this game is about actually preparing mentally to play. She's played the game of rugby. She's played with men in indoor football. She is an exceptional choice here, I think, as the first women's intern, and I think she's going to get a full-time job after she proves to the players and the coaches she belongs in and the game of the NFL. 
Yeah, I know a couple of uh, NFL players who have uh, women personal trainers during the offseason. So I don't think, it, you know, as long as she knows the physiology of the sport, you know, the psychology, the strategy, I mean, she can teach it just as well as anybody can. And good for Bruce Arians for, you know, for everything you read as a progressive thinker, uh, you know, a good guy sort of moving this step forward and helping this happen for the NFL. It's, it's great on both sides. Gutierrez 8, Fagan 7, page 5, slash key 4. Take a break. Buy or sell next. Coming up. Toby Bryant. Power forward? Power forward. Oh, we're sorry, Dumb. Your thoughts, Cody. Right. Geico presents Strange Saving Stories. Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Buy or sell. Yesterday, Bill Plasky, you were just... Throwing it out there. Yasiel Puig for Cole Hamels. Well, USA Today, check it out. Bob Nightingale report. Dodgers say Puig is available. Other teams more interested in Dodgers prospects. So you were on to something. You are ready to deal yesterday, Bill. Today you can view this from another team's perspective. Would a contender or wannabe contender be wise to trade for Puig? As much as I think it would be great if the Phillies would take him and give Cole Hamels to the Dodgers, not really so wise. I can see why they want the prospects because Puig is 24 and he's still really, really learning about the game. And he's had a great start, but his last year and a half hasn't been very good. He's bet 187 in July. He really has not been an ascending player for about a year and a half. A lot of questions, a lot of baggage. You got to be salary careful. wise, though. I mean, he makes what a quarter. Well, so yeah, he does. You're under I mean, control. what is that? You under makes sense? Well, yeah, you're under club control for the next four years, and that's really important. But you don't need him right now. Okay, Woody Page. Sure, that's why if you're the New York Mets and you're missing a bat in the lineup and you want a guy that's an entertainer and is bigger than the game. I mean, we're talking about a Manny Ramirez kind of presence that he had in Red Sox land. I think this makes great sense for contenders to bring in a guy who's got so much potential and such a small window in terms of salary. I mean, you're having for all of nothing. Let's be honest here. Ship him on down to Miami. There's nowhere else he's going to be more comfortable with the large Cuban community here. You know, uh, this is a, a franchise that honestly likes to market its Hispanic players, and w they went after Albert Pujols a little while ago, never spent money like that on anybody again until Giancarlo Stanton. So uh, I think he'd be a great fit down here now. W whether he should be moved or whether he shouldn't be moved, I I'm, uh, I'm a little bit on the L.A. side here where I'd stay with him as long as he's inexpensive. Take it. Yeah, I think he's a perfect fit for the New York Mets, as Woody mentioned. They've got plenty of pitching prospects yeah. that the L.A. Dodgers would love. And also, he seemed like he wanted to be a superstar. He seemed like he was doing things his first year in the league that seemed like he loved the limelight. Okay. So, person in New York says New York. Person in Miami says Miami. We'll give a mute to those two. We'll move on. Buy or sell two for this headline. Kobe. Could see time at power forward. Now, the article is about him playing the three alongside D'Angelo Russell and some combo of Clarkson and Williams. But Byron Scott in it, quote, some games against some teams will probably play the four. Buy or sell Kobe playing forward, Woody Page. Uh, Scott, you're wrong. You don't want him at the four. You want him at the one, two, three, where he gets spacing, where he actually can work and slash to the basket. If he's playing four down low in the post, that's not going to be effective to him. No, that's a mistake. One, two, three, not Israel. four. Israel. Kobe, it's well, I will say this. It's a sign that Byron Scott is really coming to terms with the new NBA and really uh, sort of being a little bit more of a progressive thinker okay. in terms of strategy. But I don't know if you want to introduce playing the power forward to Kobe Bryant at this point in his career. Again, maybe in a couple of games here and there against teams that are already going small, but it's not something you want to just throw in like, there against bigger like bodies. with an option to buy there from uh, Israel Gutierrez. Buy or sell Kobe three or four, Kate Fagan. I buy it. The power forward position isn't like what he, what he said. It's not down in the trenches as much anymore. I'm assuming this would be a reactive measure by the Lakers if they're playing like the Warriors and they got Harrison Barnes at the four. Then sure, you'll go with Kobe for a few minutes at the four. Okay. I think the key for the Lakers is that these young guys get to play in position. Kobe can do, go do what he wants. All right, Plasky, you're in Los Angeles. What do you think of Kobe at the three? Yeah, well, you're right, Kate. Okay, Kobe's gonna Kobe's gonna do what he wants anyway. So all this all this talk is just music. That might be the most accurate thing. But I think, but but I do think that he's 
athletic-wise, he's not really the kind of slasher, the one or two anymore. I think it suits him. And also, Kate makes a great point. The Lakers are going to get these young guys on the floor, however they can do it. And Kobe's going to have to fit into their plan this year, because okay. this is his last year. Just maybe for the people on DVR, or I, I really think if we rewound it, we would find that Bill Plasky said the point is mute at the start of his answer there. Thanks for reminding me. The point is mute. It's double mute. All right, we'll move on. Let's talk Russell Wilson because now the report is out there that he turned down the Seahawks off from $21 million a year. And also, if there's no deal by Friday, he's going to shut down talks for the rest of the season. How much do you think a deadline like that matters in a negotiation like this, Israel? I don't really think it does unless one of the parties' of circumstances change for either of them. Unless the Seattle Seahawks decide to loosen up some more money somehow, or if Russell comes down on his demand for a reported demand from 25 million, uh, that deadline it doesn't seem like it's going to move anything. Else. Okay, Peggy. I think both sides should look at it as a hard deadline. I don't think Russell Wilson wants to play for 1.5 million and leave all of that money on the table. I don't think the Seahawks want their QB with a contract issue in limbo playing this season. No plastic. If Russell Wilson runs his life the way he plays quarterback, he's too smart and too careful to let this thing go on. That doesn't mean anything. He'll sign before the start of the season. He's not going to turn down $20 million guaranteed dollars and $21 million salary. Does that mean anything life. to you? Hey, it sure does. It's important, and I think it's going to get done. Look at the Des Bryant, Demaryius Thomas deal. They waited until just hours, minutes before the deadline. He wants to make this happen, make it move. He's been playing for too little money, but he in return has given them the opportunity over the last three years because they paid him so little to go out and get other free agents for And the Des Bryant, the Mary Thomas case, those were real deadlines. This is, this is a self-imposed deadline in this case. Woody, I want to tell you that I love you, but the point is probably mute. We got to go. <laughs> Wave goodbye. Don't, don't do that to yourself, folks. Flasky, go to Harris Vegan, lightning round next. Coming up, a key. 2,500 yard goal for this season. All right, National Pat, I'm going to ask you what jumps out to you more. It's the Vikings uh, workload for Adrian Peterson, quote, as much as he can handle, and quote, from Coach Mike Zimmer, and his goal, stated goal for this year, 2,500 yards. Bill Plasky, what jumps out to you more? Well, well, both of them jump way out. I mean, they're both really optimistic and fun for training camp, and they're both kind of nuts. There's no way 2,500 yards, he's not going to get, I don't care if he hasn't played in a year, he's still 30 years old and taking these hits. And when he carried the last time, when he won the MVP award, he carried 348 times. He hasn't been the same running back since. That's, that's way too many carries. Israel. So less carries and less yards for me. Well, only one of them is really shocking, and that's Adrian Peterson's statement of 2,500 yards, because if I'm Coach Zimmer, and I've got a veteran running back who you're not really trying to save, and who has this type of potential, of course I'm going to make him work as much as possible, and then see what happens. Jake, baby. Yeah, the, the 2,500 yards st stands out to me. I don't think he's going to reach that, but I actually expect him to have a huge year, because whatever energy, the pent-up frustration that has been a very bad look for him in the offseason, I think is going to be a very good look for him on the field this year. It's 25 and then yards. he gets hit once. It would be the all-time record, the Dickerson's <laughs> yeah, record, which long, he was close to spread. just three years ago. It's a little much. Four more runs of 100 yards just thrown yeah. in there. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Last week, report the Tigers could be sellers. Today, report that they've reconsidered. In the meantime, they lost 7 of 10 Israel. How do you think Detroit should play this? No, I think they should actually be buyers. I think this team hasn't really cashed in on what it's got and what it has. I mean, it made a World Series or two, but really, you've got to win one. You've got one of the best hitters in your generation in Miguel Cabrera. They needed some more pitchers because they lost Scherzer, and Verlander isn't what he was. Okay, go find some more. You'll be right back in Thanks. a minute. Rebuilding is really hard. I think people underestimate how hard it is to sell things off and then build back up to where the Tigers are. So if there's any chance that they make the playoffs and can be contenders, you buy and you try and ride that wave. Flash. The kid, they're not going to be selling David Price off. He's leaving anyway. They're not going to get anything for him if they don't get rid of him. I think that window is just about closed on this team. You know, with the injuries to Verlander, injuries to Victor Martinez, the injuries now to Cabrera, they're getting older. At some point, they've got to start this thing over again. I think now's the time. You know, I can make the argument for you right now, Bill Plaschke. Maybe you should start things over right now, rebuild a little bit. But I think you're going to want to be in showdown. 17 points. Gutierrez is there with you, big at 16. Next to go with the last word. Uh, I'm taking this to federal court, Tony, okay? I want to take this all the way to federal court. We're, we're going. Got a 7% more chance of winning. Plaschke, Gutierrez, showdown deck. Straight ahead. One fan goes one way, one fan goes another way, and Sean Diddle. Do little. <laughs> it's like, oh, burrito for me. Stick around.
And now, for Geico's edition of Stuff Found in Your Car, we go inside your side door pocket. Hello, yes, the crumpled receipt with gum in it. From your anniversary dinner, you sprang for expensive wine, your server was Beth. That dinner was a couple hundred dollars. Money you could get back if you switched to Geico and saved hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. I bet you'd save that receipt. Frame it, even. But really, where did I go wrong? Was it the corkage fee? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com today. It's Showdown, it's Flash T and Gutierrez, it's Sean Doolittle's secret burrito compartment in his car. He says, you never know. Bill, you say what? I say I don't mess with the dashboard of my car. I, I leave it best alone. I don't mess. With, I don't know when those buttons go. I don't know how that stuff works. I don't. I don't make it upset. Well, I just leave it I alone. Just say, I don't know. What, stay away from that stuff. You have to refill that thing, right? Do you leave burritos in there for days at a time, or is it just that day you go get the burrito? Either way, your car can't smell great. I'm scared to death of my dashboard. <laughs> Take a point, go flashy. Show out too. The fan who needs to keep his head on a swivel even when behind the net. The fan who found the neighbor to hide behind. And that neighbor, the fan, who didn't spill the beer while saving said fan. Israel, which of these three fan catches? Catches your eye. Well, I'm going to give the kid a break. His head was turned. Of course he's going to be surprised. But that woman in the shot is every woman in my family. Anytime there's a baseball anywhere in the air, they're ducking and hiding. So why are you giving the that. kid a break? Watch the game, young fella. Watch the game. That's why you're there. Somebody spent good money for tickets. Keep your eye on the Israel. ball. Israel. Israel. Everybody in your family ducks behind balls. That's the Gutierrez way. Yeah. Flashkey, take the face time. After 12 years and 1,184 shows, I finally won my 300th victory. I want to say it's, a, it's an awesome day for the entire staff of the show because I want to thank everyone behind the scenes who we don't really see or hear about on the show. Aaron Solomon, Josh Bard, I'm going to read a little bit of this now. John Dorsey, Julio Maldonado, Miriam Leger, Jeff Weiner, Chris Gavin, everyone whose, whose pictures we don't see on the show, whose photos we don't see, whose faces we don't see, they make the show run. They're our family. They're my family. Thank you to everyone. There it is. For me. The 300 Wooden Club. <laughs> Bill Plaschke. <laughs> Welcome to the club, old boy. <laughs> Congratulations, Bill. Let's go to the folks. Thanks, Thanks for coming around on a 23 and a half hour break. We'll see you tomorrow around the world. The Washington Nationals are sitting high atop the NLE standings, but the Mets are lurking right behind them. They go head-to-head -head this weekend. The pregame Saturday is at 6 Eastern and Sunday at 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio.